All right, so it's about acute angles. If this is your opponent, this is you, right? Your, your heads, so this is your, your center line, right? As your arm comes out, you've got this angle, right? That's your the back of your arm. It comes up like this, and then the hand. It's that acute angle right here that forces this. When, when this happens in your forearm, it's because as you're, you're coming out, okay? See where my elbow's at? The inside of my elbow is on my center line. It's not that the outside is. You don't, you don't have to do this kind of number, although that is a good stretch. You can, you can take your arm and, and stretch yourself over. The idea is that if I'm here, and right along the pinky, right, to completion, the inside of my, my forearm is on my center line. See how the activation of the forearm muscle starts to happen? And from here, see my index finger? Everything leads up off the index finger. And at this point, this is where my, my hand and my wrist meet. It, it can't go any farther back. That is what takes the elbow out. And then what takes the arm backwards, it's not this. See how it immediately leaves the center line. This elbow pressure. So the elbow drops and allows the hand to stay on my center line. Once here, just let your hand drop. Okay, so now if, if we're thinking about it like you're, you're snow shoveling, right? We're back to the elbow pressure. As the elbow comes in, it has to move forward by virtue of, of the shape I'm moving around, right? For, for it to get from here to here, it has to move forward, but it still has to move in. So now we're trying to think about your, your wrist, your human wrist. I've talked to you guys about a Wing Chun wrist and a human wrist. As the elbow moves in, the hand goes flat, just like a snow plow. Bring these bottom three fingers in. Leave your index finger and your thumb straight out, just for the purpose of helping you learn to activate these muscles. See what happens to the forearm muscle? Now, it's not that my, my hand is rigid at this point, because it's not. It's just the postures, the structure of what's going on that activates these muscles. Once I'm to here, obviously, I can't continue on forward without losing this structure. That's where this books out stops. You? Axis, becomes a plow again. You only do three of these, okay? And you come back. Again, this is the idea that if you're a short person dealing with a taller person, your side palm would be up here because that taller person is punching downward. If you're a tall person dealing with mostly short people, maybe your side palm's gonna be here. Because again, that's not just a punch, it's also a kick. It's that guy that throws that high round kick and you go, boom, whack. Right, because it's coming up here. You don't want it. you don't want to use your hands down below your waist. You can use it for a kick, like a gonzo, but understand that every time you drop your hand, you open a space. So if he's if he can kick and punch simultaneously, you've got a problem. You're better off just kicking a standing leg and, and moving in. You know, and maybe taking the brunt of that, letting the ricochet happen. So for from here, for our, our general height, I figure you guys are the average height male, 5'10, 5'11. I'm on the bottom side of the large guy at six, was 6'2, probably six foot in a hello compression. Okay, and then 
you've got you know just six five ish. So the idea is up and forward. I don't want to. I don't typically advise only going to the ear. See how it leaves my shoulder exposed. No. Really? Is my shoulder hanging out on, on the palm yeah. side of my hand? Okay. So the idea of going to your shoulder. Oh, you're going here rather than Yes, here. so don't, don't stop short and say, oh, I'm just stopping in my ear. Because if I'm taking a heavy kick, that's a big muscle group yeah. with inertia. So the kinetic energy involved in a big, heavy kick is going to create a rebound. So if I only stop here, odds are pretty high. He's going to help me hit myself. So I want to have as much space between me and that kick as possible or that heavy blow. Right. Because the idea is, again, not to just stand there and go, look, I do Wing Chun. You're moving. Woo! Okay. So it's up and then back to the center and then bang. And try and keep this palm right at the base of the sternum. Because the xiphoid process is back there. That's, that's, that's the sweet spot. Nobody, I don't care how strong you are. Nobody wants to be hit right there. I know a couple guys who can take it, but they still go. <clears throat> so you don't you don't know what they're what they're not telling you. It's, it's the sweet spot. It's like a throat. Okay. So that's called that's the third piece of student Tao, praying thrice to Buddha. You'll like that. He's religious. <laughs> okay, so again, it's Tan Zhao. Extend as well. Notice that my arm is not overextended. If I go out here, see how there's nothing in between again? I lose all this space. So that's the idea. Okay. say here, you know, face. In my mind, the reason I don't say palm to the face, because palm to the face is easy. Bring it down and keep that palm around. Feel the draw on the bottom side of your fingers and top of your forearm. That's why at the very end of Sun Tao, where you go to the Bong Zhao, you've seen it, you haven't seen this way, you have seen it. And you do the this palm here. That's why it's done up high. It's done to the jaw. Because it's difficult. You want to do what's difficult so that you can gain the dexterity to do it. Okay, so mm -hmm. now go do that. That whole sequence three times.